Hello there, my fellow fallen aristocrats, and welcome back to some 40k lore. Today we shall add another fallen nighthouse to our collection, right here in the Grand Forces of Chaos playlist. This particular Chaos Knight faction is known as House Vextrix, and on this occasion we're gonna learn who they are, how they ended up being traitors, some of their campaigns, and a couple of other interesting bits. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Hailing from the world of Daxos Gemini, a night world located in the Segmentum Obscurus, and discovered by explorator fleets from Mars, the integration of House Vextrix into the Imperium was a bloodless affair. Notably, the warriors of the house were eager students in the ways of the cult Mechanicus, accepting ever-increasing numbers of emissaries from Mars as a sign of the household's devotion to the new order into which they had been accepted. In acknowledgement of the strong connection between Daxos Gemini and Mars, combined with a desire to facilitate the rapid integration of House Vextrix into the expedition fleets of the Great Crusade, responsibility for tactical assignments of the household's strength was bequeathed to the Fabricator General himself, Kelbor Hal. Accepted as honored servants of the Omnissiah, the house were regularly sent forth across the galaxy alongside the Legio Mortis, who were known to many in the Imperium as the Death's Heads, arguably the most infamous and hated Chaos Titan Legion. In this role, the warriors of Vextrix acted as enforcers of the Fabricator General's will. Their particular focus was on retrieving and protecting any fragment of desirable knowledge held by rediscovered strands of humanity throughout the galaxy. Sometimes those that served with distinction were assigned a place among the personal bodyguard of the Fabricator General. To be given such a job was perceived as a great honor among the ranks of House Vextrix, and did much to secure the ascension of those chosen individuals to positions of authority within the household. And so it came to be that by the end of the Great Crusade, the ruling class was placed there as much by virtue of their association with Mars as they were by their skill at arms. It is maybe safe to presume that those leaders of House Vextrix, so entangled with the Fabricator General, were the driving force behind the household's march down the path of treachery. As a sign of their commitment to the Fabricator General, the first act of the house during the Horus Heresy was rather properly grim dark. They would adorn the buttresses of their fortress upon Daxos Gemini with the corpses of the ruling noble house members whose loyalty to the Imperium was unquestionable. After purging their planet of dissenting elements, the warriors of Vextrix took to the stars in service to the War Master. Many, once again, were placed alongside Legio Mortis, supporting that Titan Legion in some of the most pivotal battles of the Horus Heresy. In recognition to their devotion to the cause, the remaining members of House Vextrix were assigned tasks according to the whims of the Fabricator General, given leave to pursue their goals by whatever means they deemed fit. It was this role that led to several dozen warriors of House Vextrix being dispatched to the Belt of Iron, ordered to conquer all in the Warmaster's name. House Vextrix was among the heretics who participated in the Battle of Beta Garmon during the Heresy, in which hundreds of loyalist and traitor titans were destroyed. The Knights of Vextrix also suffered staggering casualties, but this only served to stoke their hatred for the Imperium and of those who continued to blindly serve the Omnissiah. To delve a bit deeper into their campaigns, we have Between O10 and O15 M31, the Cataclysm of Iron Across the border sectors of the Segmentum Tempestus and Pacificus are located many forge worlds known collectively as the Belt of Iron. After the sundering of the Imperium, many of them declared for the traitor cause, at the engineering of the Fabricator General himself, while some others remained loyal to Terra or wanted to stay as far away from the war as possible. Strife and conflict between these worlds erupted into war in O10 M31, pitching the Mars-aligned forge worlds of Incanabula, Urdesh, Valia Maximal, and Calibrax against the forces of the loyalist forge worlds of Graia, Arlief, and Atar Median, while Arachnus and Gerula Station both fell into civil war. 
The resulting conflict, that later became known as the Cataclysm of Iron, saw the Forge Lords, their armies and Titan Legion allies and Nighthouses turn on each other in protracted warfare, with dozens of inhabited worlds in the region suffering as they became battlegrounds upon which they fought. The barren world of Findari Prime, contained in the borders of the Findari Spoil, would see the tread of traitors once more when an assault, spearheaded by the warriors of House Vexrix, made landfall upon the planet. This caused much confusion to the first shield Nuvars who had been tasked with defending the spoil, for the force assembled by the traitors posed only a minimal threat to the defenses erected by Calibrax years earlier, and since strengthened even more by the tech priests of Atar Median. The actions of the traitors also stood at odds with conventional invasion tactics, with roaming groups of House Vexrix knights moving from location to location, with evidence of collapsed dig sites at the center of each. To understand the logic behind the actions of the traitors, a directive was issued demanding the capture and interrogation of a traitor tech priest, in order to extract the purpose behind the invasion. After several weeks of running battles, during which House Vextrix managed to fell three Legio Ataris Titans among the world's pine crags, the warriors of House Kolchak achieved their job, capturing a tech priest left behind by the traitors as they enacted an evacuation of the planet's surface. What they were really doing there, well, your guess is as good as mine. During the Battle of Beta Garmon, marching alongside their Titan allies of the Legio Mortis, the Knights of Vextrix suffered staggering casualties, but this only made the survivors fight even harder. Those Vextrix Knights who had expressed even the slightest reservation in siding with their bond lieges against the Imperium were placed on the front lines, where they suffered the greatest losses. This conflict, therefore, became known among the nobility of Daxos Gemini as the Great Cull. Although House Vextrix was standing among the smallest of the night houses, capable of fielding an approximated 140 night armors at the onset of the heresy, this marked them as a tertius great house. However, their vaults were well stocked with rare armors. Indeed, a quarter of their strength consisted of Knights Magira, Knights Styrix, and Knights Asterius armors, a rarity among any household, let alone one of House Vextrix's size and lineage. This discrepancy can be attributed to Daxos Gemini's close ties to Mars, with shipment records highlighting the frequent supply convoys leaving the Red Planet destined for this place. Their rare armors also saw frequent use in service to the Fabricator General, primarily as part of his honor detail. As the Horus Heresy was progressing, it was these knight armors that underwent the most radical changes within the house, welcoming any modifications blessed by the traitor Mechanicus and proudly displaying their allegiance. A couple of notable knights associated with the house include The Questoris Knight Styrix, Fractured Angel This was actually one of the first knight armors gifted to the house when they swore their allegiance to the Red Planet. After the Ancient Mechanicum was riven by betrayal and the Fabricator General Kelbor Hal sided with the Warmaster, Vextrix honored its ancient accords by using knight armors, like the Fractured Angel, to wreak havoc in the name of the Dark Mechanicum. Throughout the Cataclysm of Iron, this particular knight armor would be responsible for some of the greatest violence against loyalist worlds. The Serastus Knight Atropos, Steadfast Aegis This thing was one of several House Vextrix knights present on the Red Planet during the Schism of Mars assigned there as part of the Fabricator General's personal bodyguard. As the Horus Heresy would prove, Atrapos pattern knights were considerably effective at killing god engines, and thus Steadfast Aegis rarely stood in the presence of Kelbor Hell himself. Indeed, this knight and its companions, Valor's Duty and Spear of Daxos, were often assigned hunter-killer missions, combing the red sands of Mars for surviving groups of loyalist titans and armor. The honor banners of these three knights displayed a considerable number of heavy armor, knight and god engine kills, proving that they earned their position of prominence by virtue of their consummate skill on the battlefield. The colors of House Vextrix were green and black with silver trim. Their heraldry prior to their fall to chaos 
took the form of a large sword bisecting a cog symbol, indicating their bond with the ancient Mechanicum. The sword was centered between two smaller symbols, a cracked skull on the right and the symbol of the Great Forge World of Mars on the left. Alternatively, after they declared for the War Master in the Horus Heresy, they would often display the sword bisecting the Eye of Horus, indicating their loyalty to the War Master. This symbol was centered above a half-cog icon, which indicated the Knight's loyalty to the Dark Mechanicum. Finally, following their subsequent retreat into the Eye of Terror, their heraldry morphed once again into a large black sword bisecting a black skull centered within a white corrupted Opus Machina, icon of the Dark Mechanicum. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Traitor Knights of House Vextrix for today. It seems that, unlike the stories of a couple of other Chaos Knight houses we covered previously, these guys were simply bought off with a few fancy toys, aka rare knight armors. At least they were honest about who they were while turning traitor. Moving on, regarding the several people who ask me if I'm gonna cover House Devine, the answer is yes. But whenever I do that, it might actually take two videos, because that's actually one of the more lore-rich Chaos Knight factions, due to their prominence in a Horus Heresy novel. I believe it was Vengeful Spirit. Anyway, as always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on House Vextrix in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching, and do click the bell icon to stay updated. The Emperor protects.